My name is Will Williams, and I'm a skeptic. I had to share that with you. It's the first of the 12 steps. The man you see here on the right is Professor Andrew Gowdy. He gave me my first ever lecture at the greatest university in the world. He was the professor of the School of Geography at Oxford. And in 1987, he said to me, by the year 2000, sea levels will have risen by 14 meters. And he projected this beautiful picture of New York underwater. Um, from that point on, coming from a, a, a lineage of scientists, my father's a chemical engineer, my grandfather was the uh, railway engineer in the Cardiff Works. From that moment on, I kind of didn't believe much in climate change. But very recently, I've had an epiphany. There are known knowns. There are things we know we know. We also know there are known unknowns. That is to say, we know there are some things we do not know. But there are also unknown unknowns. The ones we don't know, we don't know. OK, what the heck's Donald Rumsfeld got to do with me and Andrew Gaddy? Climate change, gentlemen. There are problems with climate change. There are some knowns which are hidden in the debate. We know about this. This is the very famous Vostok ice core. It tells us what temperature did 400,000 years ago up to the present. It tells us what CO2 did. There's the extract of just CO2 and temperature. So we know that climates have oscillated in the past. It's a known. More recently, just 1,000 years, note the gray irregularities and uncertainties. If we look at more accurate records, we pretty much agree the world is warming up. Now, if the world is warming up, can we see any other evidence? Well, we have this. This is the IPCC's report, and this brings together all research done for 2007 and takes us up to this one, the most recent produced climate graph. The world is warming up. At the same time, CO2 levels are definitely rising. You can see here that we are currently in a very, very high state of CO2 concentration in the atmosphere. Take this from NASA or from NOAA, uh, and NOAA tells us that very, very recently, we're still on the upward trend. Notice the recession that kicked in. The Keeling curve, the longest single record of CO2 atmospheric concentrations in the world. And that's the most recent one. Yes, CO2 is rising. That is a known known. It's not just CO2. Right in the middle there is methane. Methane is 25 times more powerful as a global warming gas than CO2. It's rising. Oh, dear. Anything else? Well, if we look at ice and we look at the Arctic ice sheet, we see that that is getting smaller. That's the September figure. Up there also in the northern latitudes of the northern hemisphere, we have the Greenland ice sheet. And the Greenland ice sheet's getting smaller too. That's a known known. Down in Antarctica, that's getting smaller too. Very soon, Attenborough will have less to talk about. Glaciers around the world are getting smaller too. These are known knowns. My skepticism has a problem. Or not, because these are known knowns. Sea levels. The IPCC doesn't talk about sea levels, but they're rising. Average tidal gauges or satellite images tell us that the sea levels are rising. You might notice that it's three millimeters a year, and so far New York is not underwater. So Andrew Gaudius again still sits in my mind. And finally, ocean acidification. Actually more to do with dilution of carbon dioxide in the water, but you can see the little blue line at the bottom, which is not, actually is a red line. You can see this, the seas are getting more acidic. I'm then also interested and scared stiff about energy. I get up in the morning, I drink coffee, I don't have breakfast, I'm worried about energy. There are some known knowns here. That is world energy consumption. BP produced this um, statistic every year, and you can see it's rising. If we look at why it's rising, it's been powered by good old fossil fuels. The fossil fuels are what is powering the growth in uh, the BRIC countries. And you can see from here, the colors don't show it very well, but the Asia-Pacific region is definitely powering our growth in consumption. Well, that growth in consumption has to have a balance. This is a graph that produces or tries to show that which we find in blue and that which we use in red. We seem to now be using more than we're finding. The link we also know, GDP for Japan versus energy use. As a country's GDP rises, its energy use rises. That we know. We've measured it. Inconclusive evidence, sorry, conclusive evidence. We have this, a definite doubling of China's oil consumption. But at the moment, they're still not using anywhere near the amount of ours. It's going to grow and grow and grow, is it? So what about Rumsfeld's known unknowns? What about the things we kind of think we know, but we don't really know if we know them until it's too late and we look backwards and we knew them? Here, for example, oil reserves. OPEC leaders deliberately under-declared their reserves. So in fact, the known we knew might not have been a known that we knew that was a known anyway, because they wanted to manipulate markets. How about this one? Now, 
this is quite a scary graph because if you look at the right-hand side of the labels on the right-hand side, there are a lot of possibles on that right-hand side and only one known, which is right at the bottom tends to be declining. So we have a mix, unfortunately, of known unknowns and unknown knowns. This is a very famous curve, the Herbert curve, or the Hubert curve, if you're listening to a French lecture I had to listen to once. Basically, a lot of people think we've hit that. From now on, our production will decline. I just remind you of what we saw about the OPEC nations. Are they declaring all of their reserves? Are they manipulating markets? So where will it end? Will it end with all men in bondage seeking across the cursed earth to find oil? a la Mad Max, science fiction it may be. My favorite science fiction film of 1979, you should all have one. Actually, that is the US production curve and the Hubert curve on top of each other. It's not just the USA, but Norway as well. The peak oil idea would have seemed to be beginning to pass. A known unknown, or perhaps in the end, a pessimistic blend of the future. Now, when we try to think about the known unknowns of the future, we try and think, well, what are these people going to do as they develop? You'll notice that coal and the fossil fuels, we in the OECD, we're off them. Unfortunately, the growth in all the other countries of the world is still going to use coal and oil. What about the known unknowns of climate change? This is the bit where I write to the Times, I write to the Telegraph, I bang my head against the brick wall, and other heads of geography think I'm some kind of lunatic. It looks like, in this curve, the frequency of tropical storms is getting bigger, and that must be to do with climate change. Except if you look at this curve, which shows that, in fact, the intensity of those storms is getting less. Which one do policymakers respond to? Which one do we respond to? Which one do insurers respond to? Which one do entrepreneurs respond to? This is the IPCC's projections of where the world's surface temperature is going to go. The top graph, if we don't do anything. The bottom graph, B1, if we actually try and stop using fossil fuels. What will happen to sea levels? Well, if you look at the numbers on the right, and I remind you that Andrew Gowdy told me in 1987 that it would be seven meters by now, we've scaled down our estimates slightly. But that will still have catastrophic impacts. Put all the estimates together, and you get this quite neat curve showing the range. So we have known unknowns, we have known knowns, we have unknown knowns. What about the unknown unknowns? When we try to predict quite chaotic population resource and climatic systems, we really are playing with the game engine of a video game where we can make up the rules as we go along. This is a single map I'm going to show you. Apologies for showing you a map. And this shows from the bottom color to the top color the total fertility of countries in the world. The higher you go, the higher it gets. Naught to one in the lowest, one to two, three to four, et cetera, et cetera. You need 2.11 babies per woman, so you need to be green or above to keep the population of the world growing. So not everywhere have we got this population crisis, potentially. This is a projection of what annual, uh, sorry, what the global population will do in the future. And if you translate that to the world per estimates, there's a good news curve and there's a bad news curve. And in life, it's either half empty or the world's chocker block. I tend to be an optimist. But whatever we do, we can't avoid this fact, the fact that China's Growth in energy demand is rocketing. India's is following suit. Brazil's may follow later on. These people will need more resources. Quite a squat graph. What happens if, in terms of uh, economic development, China and India suddenly jump up to the levels of consumption of the USA, which they are estimated to do? What is the future? If 80% of energy demand is going to come from the developing world, and we don't look like we're going to stop consuming our MTV, our chocolate, our GM fuels. We have to look at the flow resources. The IPCC thinks that we've got enough renewable resource in our world to cater for about 77%. This will be the new oil farm of Saudi Arabia. PVs, photovoltaics, because just taking solar, it looks like we are not going to have a problem. The issue is, are we going to get there? Are we going to have the Bondian landscape of these fantastic solar arrays as found in the Mojave Desert? Or are we going to have little nuclear power stations underneath our stairs as the Canadian entrepreneurs are thinking we might have? Or will we think first of those people who actually need the energy and have no options to substitute? So I leave you simply with the message, gentlemen. Should we ignore and not be skeptical about climate change and energy exhaustion, worry about whether we've hit peak oil or not hit peak oil, and shouldn't we just think sensibly 
And I hope when you go out into the big world which you will dominate, you will think and remember to go with the flow. Thank you. Thank you.